What's, what's your nationality? Uh, American, black. American black. What about you? You see yourself there? Mexican Aztec. What is your father? Your father is white? So you would be considered a Caucasian, correct? All right, so let me ask you this. In history, what did the so-called white man do to the black man and Hispanic man? Enslaved their people, right? Did you know that that was recorded in the Bible? Bring it out! Did you know that it was prophesied for your forefathers to do that to his forefathers, to our forefathers? Let me prove it to you. What's your name right here, bro, in the gray sweat? Gary, my name is Jose, bro. It's a pleasure to talk with you. Let me show you that you are, because you said black American, right? Because that's what your colonizer told you, your oppressor told you, right. you're a black American. Right. But God says that you're an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. All right, all right. That's the head top tribe. That's glorious. You understand that? Read that. Give me that in Deuteronomy 28, verse 15. Let's prove to him that the Bible is his book. Read. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, and verse 15. Bring it out. Now, let me ask you this. When your forefathers, sir, excuse me, when your forefathers put us in slavery, what did they have in their hand? The Bible, right? And they had a sword, too. So they forced a certain religion on us, right? With the Bible in hand. But let me show you that they used our book against us because we were in sin. Let me show you what your forefathers did to him. Read. But it shall come to pass if thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So God said it's going to come to pass if we don't listen to him. Read. To observe, to do all his commandments uh -huh. and his statutes, uh -huh. which I command thee this day. So what God is basically saying, look, if my children don't listen to my house rules, my household rules, something bad is going to happen to them. Read on. That all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So just like any father in the household, he says, look, if you don't follow my household rules, I'm going to punish you. That's what God is basically saying. Right. We know. Curse, curse shall thou be in the city, and curse shall thou be in the field. In every city, in every field that we ever been on, we've been cursed. Right. We was cursed in the field where, what? Where we was in picking cotton. Right. In the tobacco field. Right. Even right now, I saw our brothers in Mexico, where they come over here and they go right on the farms. Right. Picking apples and oranges for pennies on a dollar. Bring right. it out! That is owned by your forefathers, by the way. Yes. You understand that? Yeah. So God says, curse shall that be in the city, and curse shall that be in the field. We shoot each other down. Drugs is being implanted in our neighborhood. Right. We have poor educational system. Right. That is what? Done by your forefathers. So God said he was going to use you to punish his children. Give me that in verse 46. Verse 46. Huh? And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder. Hold on. What's your name again, bro? Derry. Now, Derry, do you believe in the Bible? What, what is what is the you don't believe in? You believe in. Right, so, right, right. So, man is flawed, right? So, if man wrote the Bible, then the Bible has to be flawed. That's basically what you're saying. What, what do you think that, those thoughts and that? That, um, that creativity comes from. It comes from God. You understand that? This is the King James version, a black man. You understand that? A black man, not a white man. Because you gotta realize, you you stole everything. Your forefather stole everything. Even this traffic system right here. You understand that? So they stole the traffic system from we what created the iron, we created the air conditioning unit, we even created cars. Right. We created light bulbs, they stored everything. Right. But you don't say, look, that's flawed. Right. You don't say the traffic system is flawed, right. but you say the Bible is flawed. Bring right. it out. Read. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 68 and verse 11. Read on. The Lord gave the word. So the word, the Lord gave this word. He gave it to us. Read on. Great was the company of those that published it. So the men such as Moses, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, John, they were great men. They published this Bible and gave it to us. God reserved this Bible for you, Derek. You understand that? He would, look, God loves you so much, he used your enemies to preserve you. Just so you could be here today to get this word. So that you can repent and realize that you are a great man on this earth. You understand that? You are God. You understand that? But how do we get so low? Why we don't act like it? 
Hey, <laughs> well, you know, a lot of it has to do with our decisions, our choices too. Yeah. Because they we were born and we don't even have a decision when we're put on this or something. Let me ask you this. Do you smoke cigarettes? Uh -huh. You do? So you have a choice to smoke or not. He, 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 he promotes it, but we have that choice. So let me give you something that's going to help you stop smoking. Let me that first Corinthians. Let me give you something, because I used to smoke cigarettes. Five years I've been clean. Bring it up. I'm going to show you a, a verse in the scripture that helped me understand I got to stop. Because right. once I knew that I was a God on the earth, right. I was like, man, God, don't do this. That's right. right. So read that. This is the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 3, verse 16. Huh? Know ye not that ye are the temple of God. So, we are gods. We are the temple of God. You understand that? His spirit dwells in us. When we read these scriptures and meditating and the plan of the spirit of God dwells in us. You understand that? So I'm now trying to get the spirit of God to dwell in you so that you can overcome what? These temptations, these sins. Read on. And that the spirit of God dwells in you. God is saying, man, don't you know that you're a temple of God and that the spirit of God dwells in you? He's asking you a question. But actually, he's asking you a question. A redundant question. That's something you should know. Read. If any man defile the temple of God, so he says, if any Israelite man defiles the temple, you know cigarettes don't do you no well, bro. Your, your lungs are black, you cough, you, you cough up all this music you can't breathe. I bet right now, if you was the child coming down this block, you'd be tired soon as you get to the next block. Right. Ready to fall out. Right. Because you're defiling your temple. Yeah. So God says, No, you not that you are the temple of God. And if you defile your temple, what? For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. So your temple is holy, we. Bring it out. The spirit of God dwelleth in you. If any man defile the temple of God. So if any man defiles the temple by smoking cigarettes, that's a that's a form of not, defiling not your temple. Not just smoking cigarettes, not, the food that we eat as well. Right. Do you eat shrimp? Do you eat lobster? Do you eat pig? That is also defiling your temple. Right. Are you married? Amen. Are you married? Uh, okay, do you have sex with women? Uh, that is defiling your temple. Right. You understand that? Service, look, anyways, servicing anyways. this guy right here, anyways, this guy right here, that's defiling your temple too. Yeah, hell yeah, dude. You understand that? <laughs> so there's many ways to defile your temple. We need to deal with cigarettes though. We need to deal with Verse 17. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. So God will destroy you, my brother. How can he destroy you by, by defiling the temple? Especially with cigarettes, he can get you cancer. Have you ever seen those, the video, the commercials, when they're talking out of the throat, you got a hole in your throat? Right. Da, 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 da. That can happen to you. Right. But guess what he can also do? You can cross this street right here, and a Mack truck come through here, knock you, turn you into hot sauce. But I could be somebody who doesn't smoke cigarettes and the same thing. Hey, but here's the thing, because the wages of sin is death. Defiling your temple is sin. That's right. You understand that? So any way God chooses to what? To destroy you based off you defiling your temple, he could do that. So you got any children? You don't have any children, but you got what? You got family members, you got friends, right? right? So don't you think that they look up to you as an example? Yeah. Right. So that means that you have to change for them. How old are you, by the way, bro? 32. 32. I'm 40. I'm about 40. I'm just say 40. When I first came into this knowledge, bro, I didn't know nothing. I thought I knew everything. Well, I had well, a little money in my pocket, had a little education, but I really didn't know anything until I came into this right here. Right. So now that you understand, do you understand that now you're not a black American, but you're an Israelite? Can I prove it a little bit more and do the rhyme before you? I can, I can see that. I can see the connection. Look, the slave ships. Did you know that, that that's in the Bible? No. Slave ships. How do we get over here to the Americas? History repeats itself. History repeats itself. The Bible prophesied that we will come and give me 48, bro. Let's start that. Bring it out! Deuteronomy 28, verse 48. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, hey, verse 48. Let's go. Therefore, shall thou serve thine enemies. Because we don't want to listen to God. We don't want to keep his laws. We want to smoke cigarettes. We want to eat pork. We want to have sex with all sorts of women. Because we want to do these things, our forefathers, and even up to now, guess what God did? Read on. Which the Lord shall set against thee. God said the enemies, his our enemies against us. Guess who those enemies were that put us in slave ships? The so-called white man. That, that, that dude that you was with? His forefathers did this to you, and your forefathers. Oh, yeah. You understand that? Oh, yeah. you, do you realize that that's your enemy? Uh, I wouldn't say that he is my enemy. God says he's your enemy. Right, that's right. I don't agree with that. You don't? You don't agree with God? No. Okay, read it from the top. Listen up. I'm going to show you. Therefore, shall thou serve thine enemies. You're going to serve your enemies. Read. Which the Lord shall send against thee. Uh -huh. 
and hunger. So when you hungry, where you go get your food from? Uh, stores. From the stores. Who own those stores? Uh, I'm assuming most. No, people. don't assume. Who own the stores? Who own Kroger's? Who own Walgreens? I'm assuming a white man. I, I don't the, know that for a fact. You know the white man owns everything in this on the side of the earth, right? right. They own everything. And even if you do, just say a so-called black man do own the store. Guess who you got to pay taxes to? The so-called white man. Right. God calls that white man your enemy. This is history in the Bible. This was first prophecy. Now it's history. Now it's going on to this present time. That's, I'm trying to prove to you that this Bible doesn't have any fallacies in it. Right. It's not false. Just because God used our people to write it, they were great men that published this Bible. I mean, I, I feel like, be careful because they can promote racism. Racism? What you mean, racism? Like, if, if, if I say that every white man, just because of their forefathers' decisions, is my enemy, that's what God says, though, my brother. No, I'm not telling you to hate. I'm not telling you to hate anybody. God is not telling you to hate. He's just telling you who was what. He's telling you the business. He's letting you know that they are your enemies. You understand? And you got to know the difference. Because if you don't know that they're your enemies, you're going to walk around aimless. Why would you hold a snake in your hand knowing that it's going to bite you and it's poisonous? But if you know that the snake is poisonous, you're going to stay away from it. Am I right about that? Right, if you see a scorpion crawling right now, you're gonna pick it up and be like, oh, this is cute. No, you're gonna stay away from it. So God is warning you, look, you gotta keep my laws because what? He gave us signs to let us know because a lot of brothers like you just don't know. I've been hurt by more, I've been hurt by more, more men of my same color than I have of the white. You know why? Because we break God's laws. I just right. read a law. Matter of fact, hold that, give me Leviticus. Let me show you why. Get out! Leviticus 19, let's read that again. Jay! You're right, we're supposed to treat each other better. We have to. In order for this to turn around, for us to be back on top, we have to treat each other better. Right. We have to, this is a must. All of us come from different cities. Get men you see in purple and gold, we come from different cities all across this earth. But what, what brings us together is these laws. There's love, treating each other better. So we're trying to impart that into you so you can do the same thing. Right. Wait, it's the book of Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 17. Uh, Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. You hear that? God says, don't hate your brother. Don't hate your brother. There's multiple ways. Look, just by thinking hatred towards you, that's hate. If I see you across the street in a, in a car about to hit you, if I don't say anything allowed to happen, that's hatred. If I know that you smoke cigarettes, and if I don't tell you not to smoke it, that's hatred. Right. So the Bible is talking about, that's hatred. Right. So the Bible says, thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. Read on. Bring it out. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. The word rebuke means to correct. So if I see you going off in your thinking, bro, I'm supposed to correct you. That's what I did with reading uh, Psalm 6811, when you said that the Bible was written by man and there's fallacies with it. That's why I had to correct that thought process. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road. Purple and gold from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.